I'm in the workshop today and I'm looking at a Rinaldi axe that um, I saw recommended by Ben Scott. So I thought I'd give it a go. Um, it's a relatively cheap axe. Got it on eBay for £48. Um, so that's not too bad. It is made in Italy, so it's made in Europe. Bit of an interesting purchase because the listing on eBay is all in Italian. So you have to try and make sure you've got the right one because there are a couple of models, I think different sizes. There's quite a lot smaller one. Um, this one believes I think it's listed as an agricultural implement um, and I think I saw somewhere that it might be used for pruning activities so I think it's sold as a general workman's tool probably for pruning trees olive trees who knows um, but you know for 48 pounds it wasn't a big investment and worth having a look and I know Ben Scott thought it was a really good axe so I thought I'd take a look and um, this is it. So I think when you first get it, the things you can note, it's um, fairly roughly finished, I think. That would be fair to say. Um, you can see still a lot of the grind marks. Um, the edge is still pretty rough. Um, it is a, a very large bit for a relatively light axe. Um, it's got a slip fit handle. So it doesn't use a wedge. Um, the pros and cons of that, which we can go into. You can see a lot of the grind marks on the back. It's, uh, as I say, I think it's, you know, it is designed for the agricultural industry. It's not a high-end hand-forged bushcraft tool, but that doesn't say it's not gonna be able to perform very well in those circumstances. And, you know, I'm, ideally I wanna be using it as a bushcraft axe and general tools so I'm hoping that I can um, smooth out some of the rough edges and tune it up and and I'll be sharing that process with you and um, we can look at the conclusions at the end and see what we think has got some lacquer on the handle it's a fairly straight handle not got much of a curve um, good size for bushcraft sort of the length of my arm the geometry obviously is quite different to your typical Scandinavian forest axe as I say, large bit. It's quite a long dimension from the um, pole to the actual blade. So from the tip, you're looking at 21 centimeters, just over eight inches. The actual uh, bit itself, just over five inches, just over 13 centimeters. Fairly straight bit, um, not much of a curve in it, which is, Probably a good thing. If you look at the how it sits, pretty much in the middle of the blade, which is a good sign. So my plan really is just to clean it up, work on the edge a bit, try and smooth off some of the rough edges. I'll probably take off the lacquer and put some linseed oil on it. Um, and I'm also making a leather cover for the blade. So once it's tuned up, it'll be quite sharp. I mean, in the moment, it's not that sharp. Um, but once it is sharpened, you definitely want to be protecting yourself and the edge. So a leather cover is always a good idea. Um, as I said, the handle is, you know, just an arm length, which is good, which works out to pretty much 60 centimeters from the end to the top of the so I think it's a pretty good size for general bushcraft um, so I think it's a good starting point and um, we'll see what we can do with it okay so I've um, managed to take the head off the handle um, as, I, as you, I said earlier pretty rough grinding all over quite a narrow eye um, not a lot of steel but that also helps to keep the weight down so in terms of weight so the head alone, seven hundred and fifty-four grams, um, was sold as a seven hundred gram head. So I guess it's not too far off. The handle on its own, three hundred and 
360. So the two together, so just over a kilogram um, in total weight, which is not too bad. Um, quite a good sort of weight for general purpose. So if you're going to carry it any distance, it's not going to be too bad. And there we have it, nice leather sheath made to protect the blade, protect me from the sharp end. Um, I've added a Sam Brown clip, quite like those, less likely to fail. Um, put some mink oil on the leather, it's come out with quite a sort of nice aged look. The blade itself, uh, well the head, really just tried to smooth off all the really bad rough grinding. They've obviously used a grindstone so it gives us almost like a bit of a hollow grind, so it's quite hard to get out all the grind marks, but I've certainly smoothed it off quite a lot, so it's much nicer to touch. Another advantage, obviously, of taking off all the deep etches, um, it's easier to keep the rust off, because obviously up here where I am, lots, lots of moisture in the air, and um, it's quite hard to keep steel tools rust-free, so certainly keeping it smooth and polished definitely helps that. Um, the slip fit, as you mentioned earlier, um, has some pros and cons. I think that the two main ones that I, I consider are it's much easier to replace in the field. If you have a slip fit and you do break the handle, it's substantially easier to re just replace one in the field than if you have to try and cut wedges, etc. But also, just this profile, by the nature of having to slide through, has quite a narrow, nice profile from the out of the box, um, so it didn't have to do too much thinning. To take the lacquer off and put some linseed on, linseed oil, so it's actually got a really lovely smooth finish now. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, turned out pretty well, so I think in the next video I'll be putting it through its paces out in the, the woodland um, and see what I think of it as a bushcraft tool. Thanks for watching.